physics just got a new problem, and it's a very interesting one. We've known for some while now that something isn't quite right with our theory for the universe at large scales. There are various tensions, but it's remained somewhat unclear how serious this really is. A new study now pinned down the origin of the problem, and they found a noticeable, if not huge, deviation from Einstein's theories. Physicists described the universe as a whole with a model called Lambda CDM, where the lambda is dark energy and CDM stands for cold dark matter. That's invisible stuff which allegedly fills the universe and should not be confused with Sabine's sense of humor. Lambda CDM, which is also sometimes called the concordance model, depends on six parameters from which we calculate predictions for quantities that we can then measure. One of those is the Hubble constant, that's the rate at which the universe currently expands. Unfortunately, different measurements for the Hubble rate have resulted in different values, so there is simply no prediction from the Lambda CDM model that fits all the observations. This problem is called the Hubble tension. There is a similar problem with another prediction that's for a quantity called Sigma 8, sounds like a student union, but it's a measure for how how fast matter clumps in the universe. Sigma 8 has a similar problem as the Hubble constant. Different measurements have resulted in different values, so there is no prediction that fits all of them. Physicists call it the Sigma 8 tension, but since that's such a clunky name, it's made headlines under the title that the universe isn't clumpy enough, or that it has a distribution paradox, or that it's too thin. No matter what you think about the status of theory development, and let me assure you I fully understand if you're not excited about it, I just find it so amazing that we even have these measurements to talk about. I mean, when I was a student, cosmology was basically philosophy. Now we have data from like a dozen different measurements. Cosmic microwave background, quasars, supernovae, gravitational lenses. Too bad for philosophers, I guess. For this new study now, they looked at gravitational lenses and images of big galaxy clusters collected by an experiment called the Dark Energy Survey. From this data, they extracted a quantity called the Weyl potential. This is the combined deformation of space and time. It basically tells you how strong the gravitational potential is that light has to go in and then out as it passes by a galaxy or galaxy cluster. What you expect as the universe gets older is that these potential wells get deeper because matter clumps. We can use the Lambda CDM model to calculate how they're supposed to get deeper. And you saw it coming, the calculation doesn't fit the measurement. The universe hasn't been clumping enough. As you can see in this figure, the fit to the data is, well, not great. Though there isn't a lot of data, which is why the statistical significance is not all that high between 2 and 2.8 sigma. That's just about high enough to write a paper about. They also checked if the data can be explained by using some types of modified gravity, and the answer is yes. You see an example here, but I suspect there are various different types of modified gravity that would do that. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you understood. What does all this mean? I think this is a very good development. This is because the data that give rise to the Hubble tension and the sigma ray tension, they come from combinations of different data sets. These different data sets give us snapshots of the structures in the universe at different moments of time. And the tension is that these don't fit together with how the theory says they should change in time. The problem with this is that you're not sure whether the discrepancy is between the data and the theory or between the data sets. It's like if you have several portraits of the Queen at different ages and someone asks you if that's evidence she had a facelift. Maybe, or maybe one of the artists was very nearsighted. This new measurement now is giving us snapshots for the universe at different times from the same data set. That makes it much harder to blame the discrepancy on something to do with the data analysis. Assuming this is right, what do we learn from it? There are two possibilities. The one is that the Lambda CDM model is wrong and we need another model within the overall framework of general relativity. This could be, for example, because dark energy changes in time 
or because we need to take into account voids or something like that. The other possibility is that general relativity itself is at fault and that we need another theory. Einstein was wrong, basically. That said, I sometimes get the impression that if an astrophysicist has three different scales in their bathroom and they give three different results, he'll claim it's evidence for a modification of gravity. So this is very intriguing, but hold back the champagne. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant.org. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And there are adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Bina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.